So you're probably here. <clears throat> you probably own one of those. And you probably want to put some of these in there somewhere. So that's today's topic. Uh, that's pretty much what we're going to do. This is a, don't quote me, I think it's an 01. Beautiful truck. My best friend just bought it. Um, sets at stock height. I think it's got 285s on it. Um, so these are, let me see the brand here. These are 94 2013. These are Thurin. I'll show you guys. See if you guys can see that. And that's the brand. I can give you a little sticker too. Um, those are the coil springs. They're supposed to be soft ride. Um, I think it's supposed to make it, I mean, the thing already drives like a brand new truck, um, cause it's a, pretty much a brand new 2001. Um, we're going to install these today and I believe those are Bilstein 5100 series. I'll get you the part number. These are the Bilstein. These are the part number. You guys can see that. That's the part number. Um, came with all the hardware and everything, so that's pretty much on today's uh, today's agenda. We're gonna install the springs, install the shocks. We're gonna get this thing. I believe they claim um, two and a quarter, two and a quarter inches of leveling. So hopefully, we're gonna measure too. Um, we're going to measure it at ride height right now before I put on the lift. Figure out, figure out just where it is. So, we are from tar to fender for 40 inches. So, count on you guys. I don't know if you guys remember that. So we're 40 inches from the concrete to the top center of the uh, front fender. So that's what we'll do today is we'll get this thing leveled out. It's got a little rake, not much. Just typical stock dodge uh, rake. Um, so we're trying to get our level leveled out, some new shocks on, some new coil springs, and should look a lot better. Um, these trucks look way better, even with a little bit of height in the front, they look awesome. So. That's what we're going to do today, so without further ado, let's get to it. <clears throat> Alright, so first step, you got it on the lift, got it floating. Um, pretty simple. I'm going to try to do this step by step so you guys know exactly what you need. You don't need a lift to do this, but I am blessed enough to have one myself. The... Socket is 15 sixteenths on my Cobalt Impact. Thankfully, this truck is always taken care of, so I'm hoping everything comes right apart, but I don't want to jinx it yet. So, um, <clears throat> yep, just got the wheels off, got on the lift. Um, our Probably our first step is we're going to want to... Um, we're going to want to drop our bar links. We're going to take our sway bar links off. That way the axle can be at full droop so we can fit our coil springs in and everything. So um, that is going to be next on the list. So let's get to that. Let's get these sway bar links off. All right. On to the next one. So as you can see, let me get my flashlight. Sway bar links off. So as I lift the truck up, it'll let the axle at full droop. And other side, boom. Okay, so that one, get you guys a size. If I can find my old Milwaukee tool I just used. Mind me, I'm just losing my marbles. Where would I have put it? Right here. All right, that one is a 17 mil. Um, kind of forgot, I don't know if Dodge doesn't, 
Dodge must uh, use a lot of um, American sizes. So anyways, the like the lug nuts are American and even, so I went, I fast forwarded on you guys and I went and I did the, uh, these are 13 16 so your, these are your lower shock bolts, which are located, you can't really see, but down in there. And you actually, the, the bolt part of it comes out of there, out of the front of the axle. Then you have your um, nut that comes out there, and it looks like this. And that's it right there. So um, it's got a stopper on it, so it won't spin on you, so you don't have to use a wrench or nothing. So that is a 13 16 on my other impact there. So I bolt those on. And mind you, that's what retains, I believe, retains pretty much the whole front end is the shock. So, like, the shock and the sway bar are the only things that stop the front axle from drooping all the way back and losing the coil spring. So that's what kind of keeps everything in check. So now that we got that done, I can lift the, put the, because I got it on jack stands. That's what I forgot to tell you guys. Put it on jack stands if you got to lift, whatever. You know, put some pressure back on the suspension so you can do your sway bar links. See how the sway bar pops up now. I'm gonna put that bushing away so I remember where I put it. Now, get the other one off. Okay, boom, sway bar links. And everything comes apart because this truck wasn't driven much and it's in really nice shape. It's a shame somebody painted all this because it's just gonna get flaky and fall off. But I happen to be a fluid film guy, so I will probably fluid film this as well. So, anyways. Got the lower shock bolts out. Got the sway bar links. Now we can um, I'm probably, I don't know if we have to take the shock tower out. I think we just have to, let me get a flashlight for you guys. And I'll figure out the size, obviously, for everyone. Um, it's kind of hidden here. Shock tower for this side is right there. Down in there, that stud, that's the top of your shock. This one, probably gonna have to pull the air box out. So like I said, this is a 24 valve, so, oh one, so. To pull the air box out, pull the air tube off to the turbo. Get that off, and then hopefully we can get some spring compressors on these coil springs and get them out. And start thinking about throwing some shocks in this son of a gun. So yeah, let's keep going. All right, on to the next segment. So we got some old shocks. I pushed down on these things. I use like no pressure and they collapse. So they were definitely seen better days. So we get it down so we can get these coils out. Um, so we'll go through again, not, you know, nut and bolt size for everything. Um, so you have to, again, let me get a flashlight. Do, do, do. Flashlights, there it is. Actually, this one's shining down. See these three? These three on the shock tower here. Or it holds the shock tower, and those three are 15s. All right, so you're gonna have three 15s on either side. They're pretty easy to get at. I took the cover off, and you can kind of get at all of them from there. I didn't actually have to take the air box out, so. And he needs an air filter anyway. So, same thing with this side. It's a little trickier to get down in there, but you can get them all out, all those three. Um, those are 15s uh, shock. The nuts that go here, so there's a there's a washer, a bushing, and then it goes through the shock tower around here, and then there's another bushing, then a washer, and then a nut. So that's how the order goes when you put the new shocks in. Those were, um, let me find, right here. Those are 19, so top of the shock, 19s. All right, so next step is done. Now we just got to pull these coils out, start figuring for the, um, start figuring out what we got to do to get the new ones in. They are obviously significantly taller, I think, than these. So we'll see how far the axle is able to droop. We might be able to squeeze them in without compressing the shocks, which would be awesome, or compressing the 
springs. I don't want to use spring compressors. I hate using spring compressors. So let's uh, drop her down more, get these coils out, and we'll continue with our um, with our project here. And we're about halfway through, so it's going good so far. All right. Well, the uh, springs are in. They are long. They are quite a bit longer than the factory ones. Um, so here's the trick. I have these. These are really for like uh, car and SUV coil springs. Aren't really meant for heavy duty trucks, but they worked. Uh, you got to compress them, compress the spring as best you can, which is for those things. They started bending once you got these like two inches. Um, do that, and then I took the my bottle jack. <clears throat> I put it right there where the bump stop is. Boom, boom. And then basically, I just maxed out my travel. As you can see, kind of bent up on that a little, but that's okay. Ain't a big deal. Ain't hurt nothing. Um, what I try to do, and what Thurin tells you, make sure these labels are facing up here, not upside down, because obviously. The coil wound, the winding of the coil is smaller here and bigger here for the pocket, so they all fit. But uh, I made sure, like my end of my spring was where my old spring was on both sides. So make sure you do that. Um, so pretty much that's how I did it. I used the bottle jack, max out suspension travel, compressed them with those spring compressors, kind of jimmied them in there with a pry bar and hammer and blah blah blah. You can see I smacked them, but it's okay. It'll be all right. It is what it is. So, got them in there. Pretty much the hard part's over. Now we're just going to do, get it back on its weight. We'll do, uh, we'll get to doing the shocks. So, that's really all we got left. Put it back on the jack stands, which I'll do now. Get it back on weight. And, uh, we can get it compressed. Compress down. Oh, I gotta move. Bring the truck a little bit left here. There we go. Like that. And then drop the. Uh, keep you guys on video so you can see some of this. Put some weight back on this puppy. Um, and they're so they're obviously a softer um, weight wise. The the spring rate's softer, but it's got more coils in it. Um, it's a longer spring, but it's got less spring rate. So that's what makes it a soft ride coil to simplify it for everybody. So come down here. Look at the suspension. Whoa. Oh, wow. All yeah, so kind of go easy with it. Basically, what we do next is we gotta do our obviously eventually get the um, get the sway bar links hooked back up, get our shocks in there, and basically you want to get the shocks in there, get the shock tower back up on above the shock, and then you can cut your straps. These are held in by straps, so you don't want to don't cut these, or at least I wouldn't cut these to your shock towers on top of the springs and they're just a pain in the butt to compress back down because you're they're inside the coil so you're kind of screwed at that point so but anyways they're in so we'll go on to the next segment all right moving on so pretty much got it done um this stuff's gonna come in handy so we'll continue on with talking about the lower shock bolts pretty easy like i said they go down in there and there's a nut cert you hold and threads on and it stops it so it doesn't spin um you're gonna need this to kind of get up in here and move the shock around get it centric in the in its place and then you'll need this guy to kind of you know punch it in the hole and just get it straight so it'll the bolt will go through other than that bam you know shoot the bolt in there tighten that up um and what i did is for the shocks i kept the the plastic wrapping on them but i put the hardware i put the lower hardware on um and then restrapped it up so that way 
you can put the shock in there. And then I sat the tower down and I got all the nuts started um, with the strap still on. And then once those were started, I cut the strap, the shock went up, and then you just, you guys can see that. But put the top hardware on and tighten the bolt. Secure the shock down. And then obviously final tighten these afterwards. Um, I won't show you the other side, but it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward. And then again with the um, sway bar links, reconnect them. It doesn't seem like, I'm curious how tall it's going to be because the sway bar went right back together. Usually if you level these trucks out, they, uh, the sway bar links tend to get at an angle because the axles drop so far down. But this looks pretty good. Um, so we're going to get it on the ground here. I'm going to put the air filter setup back in and just tell him he needs a filter real bad. But uh, get it on the ground, or lift it back up, I should say. Get the tires on it. Torque the lug nuts, because I always do it, especially with other people's stuff. I don't mess around with um, not torquing stuff for people. So get it back up in the air, and then we'll get a view at ride height. Like I said, I think it was 40 inches to the top of that fender, like right here. It was 40 inches, so we'll see how much we, these, um, I, I can't even remember the name of these springs. Sorry, guys. Thurin, I think. Thurin fabrication or something. But, yeah, they fit great and everything. I don't know if you're supposed to have an isolator below this, but there wasn't one on here, so we're going to run without the isolator on the bottom uh, puck. But there is an isolator here, so that's all I know. That's supposed to be there, so. Anyways, we'll continue on, get the wheels on, get this thing at ride height, and I'm probably taking it around the block, get the springs to settle a little bit so we know we can get an actual final ride height. So, but yeah, so we're continuing on.